that means force displacement curve will be similar. That is what we have to observe the thing and the other one is during the plastic deformation volumes remains constant, volume will not change. So, okay. And so for that we can extract the some relations among the based on the central testing. So, there are two important terminology as a PG level you should remember at the uh, advanced level aspect if you should remember that. So, when you are calculating the stresses which are involved for the uh, ordinary tensile testing, there are two things we should remember that is one is engineering stress and other one is is called the true stress. So, which one we need to perform and which one has to be considered for the real time experimentation and real time calculations of the mechanical behavior and real time simulations of any 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 process of any metal forming process or any other thing. For that which is st which stress has to be considered and what makes the difference of those two stresses we can see from this thing. So, if you take the engineering stress aspect, so it is explaining that normal stress, okay, nominal stress sigma n represents the nominal stress equal to force upon the original cross sectional area. Right. So, when you say original cross sectional area, we know that when you are taking the stress of strain curve, stress strain curve of any material. So, if you are taking the cylindrical sample, we can consider the area of the cylindrical sample and if you take the uh, rectangular type of sample, we can see the area of these, these thing. So, in once you calculated the initial area of the specimen, when you are going to conduct when you are calculating the engineering stress aspect, this area will not change throughout the test of the ten, throughout the test. So, whereas, when you are talking about the strictly because you are talking when the testing is going on, we will fix the input parameter as a rate that rate indicates the time also. When you are talking about the rate, when you are talking about the rate, you must know. So, that means, each and every point aspect, each and every uh, deformation point, there must be different areas of cross sections. Because once the deformation continues, the area will not be maintained same. So, when area is changing, then we should know if area is changing, how we can believe the engineering stress as the actual stress to know the behavior of a material. For that, engineering stress may not give you the proper explanation may may not okay so for that we have been moved to the true stress in which a will be calculated in every time that means it will indicate the current cross sectional area that means instantaneous area can be will be taken to to calculate the true stress of a true stress for the material. So, that is how this nominal and true stress and uh, will be related. In the same way you can uh, we have to, we, we need to know how the stress uh, strains can be calculated for the engineering stra stress engineering strain aspect and the true strain aspect. So, if you see here for the engineering strain aspect we can see change in length by original length. So, this indicates the change in length, this also sometimes we can write delta L and the original length we can say. So, but when you are talking about the instantaneous strains, instantaneous uh, changes in the geometry during the deformation, then change in length and original length, change in length by original length also will give you the uh, initial deformation to final deformation phenomena to know the instantaneous thing then we should consider the change in length that is what strain increment will, will give you the certain idea of that is d sigma equal to d l by l and the total strain defined the accumulation of these incremental strains. That means, for each and every point d equal to d l by l this will tell you the each and every point aspect the strain calculation. To make the total deformation that is total strains involved in that particular deformation of any material, we can calculate the 
E T that is total strain equal to the original length to final length which is a instantaneous strain that is dl by l that is particular point of uh, strain can be taken as a ln of sig l by l0 so that's how this is called the logarithmic strain or henke strain so there are so many small strains can be there so when the small strains are there we can make it as neglect so finally we can derive the true strain as ln of 1 plus that is engineering strain so true stress and true strain and engineering strain can be related through et is equal to ln of ln of 1 plus e these all are the fundamental concept for the plastic deformation behavior and plus theory of plasticity will be explained through these fundamental things for which these already we, we have studied many times but these are the fundamental things which are which will give you the insight to the plasticity of theory of plasticity and furtherly we can also relate to the true stress to the when it is going for the plastic deformation and we should take the nominal stress to the actual stress that is what whatever the volume is there we will not be considered the change of the volume is remains and change of volume is constant in the plastic deformation so that can be linked to the stress as so stress is equal to sigma n l by l0 which will give you the your true stress also okay and if you see the further the stress strain diagram of the tension test can be described using the true stress and nominal stress strain definitions if you see here this this particular okay typical stress strain curve this indicates your true stress uh, sorry engineering stress and engineering strain so along the x engineering uh, strain along y engineering stress if you see the specimen of which is a cylindrical specimen when you started the elongation so we can see each and every point when the deformation is when the actual geometry is not changed this zone is called your elasticity zone once the deformation began up to here okay so up to here this zone there is no distortions in the specimen so from here to here that means distortions will not be there but elongation can be seen without any changing of the geometry so once it reach to the a point you can see the necking occurs at that particular point that is that point is indicated that point is called as a your universal tensile strength that is ultimate tensile strength so that is uts so ultimate tensile strength where once the ultimate tensile strength is reached then after that point the necking will begin and when keep on the load is processed then failure will occur the same phenomena if you take into consideration for the true stress and true strain aspect whereas if you see here the graph is coming uh, going there and coming down when it's coming to the true stress and the true strain behavior graph keep on going like that so we can you can ask and there is a lot of thing lot of confusion you can raise here and you can also so many ask so many questions here whether it can be seen for the compression test also or compression test and this tensile testing are different are the same if so how we can relate the compression and to, and the tensile test in a similar manner so for that also we have the reason if you see the compression test compression test will also lead to the similar results as the tensile test Wh whatever the mechanical properties we are extracting from the tensile testing similar things can be extracted from the compression test also only thing is here what what makes the thing is we will use the when the compression comes so whatever the values which we will take that will be with the negative symbol we can express but thing is 
if one plot of the true stress versus true strain for the both the tension and compression absolute values of the compression two curves will more or less coincidable Co okay so in the whether it is a compression or whether it is a tension when you are plotting true stress and true strain curves true stress and true strain curves in the compression aspect in the tension aspect both will coincide whereas in the engineering stress and engineering strain aspect the compression and the tension will have the some difference that is the reason so when you are going for the actual uh, uh, behavior of any material so when you are going for the three dimensional aspect when you are going mathematical derivations we will consider only the true stress and true strain relations in the in the further derivation aspect it is clear i hope okay tension test and compression test results will are similar when it is coming to the true stress and true strain curves all aspect those two curves will coincide each other but when it's uh, when you are discussing about the engineering stress and engineering stress aspect compression and the tensile behavior slightly differs that is the reason we consider only the true stress and true strain things and the another phenomena is when you are deforming the when you are uh, giving the keep on loading and un, keep on loading on the particular material to get the deformation loading and unloading phenomena so if you do then what will happen here so for that we need to consider one bassinger effect so in which we are going to observe how this loading phenomena can be seen when you uh, when the plastic zone reaches how this loading phenomena unloading loading phenomena can be there will be there and when it is under the elasticity zone how the loading can loading behavior can be there for that if you see the figure here so when you are keep on loading here right suppose this is the point where we are discussing about the elastic limit where once this point reaches suppose if you unload here right if you unload here what will happen if it reaches to the plasticity level right in the plastic deformation this zone is plastic deformation when you unload here how it is going to comes to the this one for that there are two types of hardening phenomena phenomena so we can see so if you see the what is bassinger effect there is in fact yield point in this case will be significant less than the corresponding yield stress in the tension the reduction in the yield stress is known as the bassinger effect that means if one if you take a sample and loads it in the tension into the plastic range then you unload it then it continues to the compression one find that the yield stress in compression is not the same as the yield strength in the tension understand so once you load it and stretch the and uh, it's going for the deformation and up to the plasticity plastic range when you unload it then when it's coming to the original position and key, it will keep on compress it right once you at extract it once you unload it then it will comes to the original position that means what the compression is phenomena is happening when compression phenomena is happening that means we can assume that we can assume that the compression is coming down it is coming down like that right so when it's coming down when it's coming down so thing is when compression yield stress and tension uh, tension yield strength if they are not equal in that case only okay in that case if the e in fact the yield point in this case will be significant less than the corresponding yield stress in tension that reduction phenomena <coughs> sorry the reduction in the yield stress is known as the bassinger effect so bassinger effect can be seen with the loading and unloading phenomena so in that there are two kind of uh, hardening phenomena so we can see here there are that means the solid line deplicates replicate of real material the dotted lines are extremely cases which are used in the plasticity model that means this is actually the 
actual material behavior whereas this dotted lines indicates the plasticity models. So, for that here so the first is the isotropic hardening model in which yield stress in tension and compression nominated equal. If if yield stress is in the in the isotropic hardening model in the isotropic hardening model yield stress in tension and compression are maintained equal whereas in the second uh, second in the second case that is being a kinematic hardening law in which total elastic range maintained constant throughout the deformation in the kinematic hardening law in which the total elastic range is maintained constant throughout the deformation so these two models can be utilized in the plasticity theory okay so and the other one is when you are going for the pla elastic plastic deformation okay so yield behavior must be relate with the hydrostatic pressure whereas in the hydrostatic pressure when you are correlating the yield behavior in terms of the hydrostatic pressure and we should remember hydrostatic pressure or you can say yield behavior is independent of the hydrostatic pressure and we know that this can be this can be related to the your uh, stresses uh, stresses in the stresses So, the hydrostatic pressure can be related with the stresses they are sigma x x and sigma y y and sigma z z is equal to minus p. So, when you are going for the mean stress that is sigma hydrostatic pressure can be expressed as in the in terms of the mean stress that is sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 by 3. This is we have seen already this is nothing but your negative pressure sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 by 3. This is what the mean stress we can explain in terms of the your principal stresses and the normal stresses. So, 